Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Path of Me. I'm your host, Wendy Hutchinson. My guest today is the beautiful Patsy Balaki. She is a feng shui consultant. She's a graphic designer, owner of Zenotica, and her company focuses on really finding that brand essence and, and marrying her design and creativity with the essence of her clients. Right, Patsy? Welcome. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for the, inviting me. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about your design background, how you, you know, found this calling and incorporated your feng shui and found a way to marry both uh, design and feng shui with your graphic design background. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if we think about it from its core, it's amazing, truly amazing for me to kind of connect the dots to where everything started for me as a designer, as a um, harmonizer of energies, how I'd like mm -hmm. to perceive that, how I have become a friend to the what the conception of balance in, in life because it's something that I miss pretty much my whole life and so a part of me my life journey is to envelop myself with the notion of balance what is balance and things that were a misfit for me how do I make that happen for me and I'll give you some examples. So my journey actually started since I was a little, little kid. I always had a intuitive sense of how to connect with nature, how to, you know, you would say, listen to the elements, the wind, the, the earth. Um, how I really felt really connected, you know, hearing signals and feeling the balance of nature from the outside wanting to bring that within that is my bedroom you know so mm -hmm. how to make everything in my if something was jittery if i wasn't feeling comfortable you know having um, troublesome type of family life when i was a kid bringing order and balance in my life was something that i just needed to have so if things were not if things were not right with my family that part of me wanted to to fix that somehow, bring some way of like pushing that energy out of my system. I did not know what that was. Right. I was what, five, five years old or whatnot. Yeah. And little by little, I started feeling how things really made me feel better when things were in order. So I always been a neat freak, sometimes being even called anal, but it's just a part of me being very strict I guess my background coming from a Catholic um, school mm -hmm. old girls it was it was very um, rigid in a way but I liked it I like balance I like organization to me that it always made me feel better or safe that things were okay at a certain level mm -hmm. from there on at the same time I was very creative I love to draw I I surrounded myself with individuals, older individuals, that could provide a sense of me, of you know, teaching me something new. So I want to say that I'm pretty lucky and very interesting story that I have because when I was a little kid, we grew up in a huge house in El Salvador, so big that my grandfather used to rent a whole floor for university students. Wow. That will travel away from the city, you know, the capital, come in there and go to school, the University of El Salvador, you know, places in that surrounding area. I was lucky enough that my kindergarten teacher also resided here in my oh, house. Wow. And she was what my mom called a hippie. You know, I think I know what that was. She didn't, she didn't shave her legs. She dressed really, you know, with very colorful clothing, mm -hmm. very artistic, very hobo-like. You must have loved her. But she was uh, studying Hinduism. I l learned to understand this afterwards. She was a vegetarian. She was 
an activist wow. during the time of, you know, civil um, revolution. Unrest. Mm -hmm. First teachers of, you know, art and balance and wholesome wellness, I would say, was my teacher, Senorita Bucaro. That's her last name. Very interesting. And from there on, I started the journey of, you know, listening to silence and paying attention to detail, looking at things that are very detailed version of what they are, seeing very close to those things that are sometimes invisible to you. And also seeing the overall, you know, being more of an observant, you know, if you're out there in nature, what is it telling you? Mm -hmm. And that was, that's kind of how I grew up as an individual. I really didn't have kids, friends my age. Most of my friends were older and it was good for me. I was very competitive and I always felt like I was a misfit. So I kind of stood by myself most of the time. I can like, relate to that. I yeah. can relate to that. I think a lot of us are who are energy healers, uh, mystics, psychic. Yeah. You know, a lot of us were kind of different. Well, I had a huge turn of events when my parents divorced. We came to the United States. My grandmother, my maternal grandmother was already living here. And it was just, I was so outside of my element. I was mm. so disturbed, very upset. Mm. I was only 11 and my whole world had turned upside down. Didn't know the language. It was really hard for me to, yeah. to adjust because I was very content with my life as it was, even though later on I understood the reasons why we left. Yes. And, um, I'm most grateful for all the experiences for my mom stepping in and really showing, you know, a way of how she can be full of integrity, you know, with her life as a woman and as a, as a mom. There were a lot of hidden lessons with that. And sure. I grew up knowing this. And she is one of the most humbling teachers my whole life. She's, you know, if there's a word that would describe her, just will be a butterfly and it's Ooh, so different love that yeah and it's you know she's such a gentle person so totally outside of who i am and somehow it's taking me so long to actually think that i'm that i'm part of that as well part of that metamorphosis that you know it's it's turbulent it goes through a lot of different drastic changes you know if you yeah. think of that little caterpillar all the drastic changes it goes in such a little time for you know for its lifetime and so my journey with creativity and art how it always seems like i come up with the greatest ideas when something is really not working out so for example, <laughs> I wanted to become an architect. That was just like my oh dream. I gosh. used to play with Legos when I was a kid. I was detail oriented, very smart, very good with numbers, mm -hmm. had really good penmanship and the creative aspect of that. I hated computers though. So what happened? Um, I got pregnant very young. I couldn't finish my studies and mm -hmm. decided to go into something a little more attainable which at the time was called commercial art and visual arts mm -hmm. and I really really enjoyed it I felt like a part of a group of individuals that were quirky very smart very talented and doing something very useful with the art later on I moved to Miami and I wanted to continue being a visual artist but at the time, the counselor said, you know, I think, you know, being a single mom, I think you probably do much better and definitely have a good job if you were to learn programming, if hmm. you were to become a web designer, because you can actually implement all your artwork, Photoshop it and use it in, you know, websites. And I'm like, hmm, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> and lo and behold, wow. I would say that out of all my friends from college, I'm probably one of the two women designers that are still working Doing with it. 
web development and programming and all that, which is really awesome. something to say. And the feng shui, how it comes into life for me after, you know, coming to the United States, tapping into architecture, learning about feng shui through the architectural aspect of design. But through my journey of also healing, which we can touch upon, you know, my own healing journey, I came upon, I came across feng shui in a totally different way. It was all about how to harmonize, how to heal your energy through the work of feng shui and also the internal system, the chakra energy system. That's it. That's a completely different image of what most people have. <laughs> exactly. Or what a uh, definition of what feng shui is. So how divine that the universe guided you to a program in New York, yeah. right? And well, a mentor, I, teacher. Yeah, I picked up that book and back in 1999, I was looking for ways to really simplify my life, really bring in more balance in my life. I was going through a lot of emotional hurdles at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you do anything, you know, part of your intuitive self, your spiritual self is always seeking for virtue, for quietude, for peace, or some, some kind of um, resolution mm -hmm. to what, you know, to what you need. And when I came across this book, I was mesmerized when he was talking, when she was talking, my teacher, Nancy, Andy, Santo Pietro, about how we could do whatever we can in our environment. But if we're not looking inside this mirror, mm -hmm. we're going to continue projecting everything in our surroundings. It's like, what is it that it's impeding me to become the better aspect of myself? Yes. How can I heal my heart? How can I heal my, my confidence level? How can I, you know, really get through how I've been living my life if my energy centers, if I'm not in alignment with my true essence. And that think, was a huge deal for me. I think people a have a misunderstanding around what healing is. Yeah. People don't understand that everything starts with your core essence, with the balance within your chakra system, energetically, core values, vibration, energy. Yeah. That's the foundation of everything. And yep. you know, people the, don't understand that. They don't. And go through cycles, right? We're, we're turning a new decade. And through, and I can see every single step of my healing journey from 25 years ago up to now. It's been remarkable. It's been, there are certain connections that I, you know, where to go to find what works for me. And I think people will need to allow the opportunity that, you know, quick uh, healing doesn't happen all of a sudden. Just like, you know, change nature takes time to really be in harmony with, with it all. Yeah. So when I think it taught me patience and I'm still going through that life lesson <laughs> of, of being patient with ourselves through our healing journey, through our healing processes, whatever it is that we're seeking to to manifest in our lives. For me, it was more of a physical, but of course, that was the tipping point of where, you know, emotional, the spiritual, the mental bodies are in misalignment. You know, the body will react, will be the last one to say, hey, pay attention to me. So when people are going through a lot of physical hurdles, they should really pinpoint, it's like, where did this start it? They start in the head, they start in the heart, they start in, in the stomach, and they start in the liver because every single organ touches on, on a, a particular emotion. I was just going to say there's usually an emotional trigger yes. or something unresolved emotionally that is yeah. driving the physical manifestation energetically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people really want that quick fix. People mm -hmm. don't really want to tune in necessarily and yeah. get quiet and follow their own internal guidance. They want to run to the doctor, get that pill, get that shot, get that lotion, <laughs> be fixed. Yeah. But it will continue to surface if you don't heal the inner story, the inner energy driving the external manifestation, right? 
Yeah, definitely. And it, it continues to keep going and evolving. I am so happy to say that it took me 26 years for me to find a traditional medicine that will help my body heal through hepatitis C because back then, 20 plus years ago, even though I tried some medical treatments, they did not work for me. There was really no cure. You can, you know, there will be, the side effects will be horrible. I mean, I even lost my hair when I was in my late twenties. It was just. That must have been so hard for you. It was hard. It was so hard. hard. There must have been such dark times where you just want to give up. You just must have been so hard. And to see that now it's Mm. truly remarkable and very humbling. Some, you know, my family, for example, kind of tend to see that version of me. And obviously, because we haven't been spending much time together, they haven't really seen this whole process of healing, Mm -hmm. how not just the physical, they never observed it because they never show signs of being sick. Right. It's my signs were more of anger issues and being Mm -hmm. very, yeah, sporadic in that sense. But at the same time, it was really grateful to have them support me however they could. Right? My mom living in Connecticut, my mm-hmm. father living in El Salvador, but my core net, my core nest, it's my, my immediate family. And I don't think I could have done that. And this, I, I want to touch upon this because uh, there are a lot of people out there that, are, that do not have a support system. Right. That are feeling lonely or don't know how to ask for help. Mm-hmm. And that was a huge lesson for me to be able to ask for help. That to me was, um, I couldn't. One, for me, it was a sign of weakness. For me, it was like I couldn't support myself, um, being treated a certain way because you're asking for help. And, you know, I've witnessed all these things since I was a little kid that, especially being a woman, it was terrifying. It was really terrifying because, you know, you would expect for somebody to give you help, but not conditional help. Not expect- <laughs> that's that's the key, right? A, a lot of times it is conditional. Yeah. Right? And, and that, then there's scorekeeping. Like, well, I did this for you. So now you do this for me. Yes. Right. Which is so, not unconditional love or help. So I've been through this whole process of, how to deal with that, but what I wanted to say, there is light in everything. I you know, found my husband 20 years ago and he has been a true, a true friend, a true partner, a true supporter of me. I, I feel that deep inside we have traveled many, many lifetimes oh, together. Sure. Mm-hmm. And when we met, it was just so peaceful. There were no like rahs and like fireworks <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, You've probably like, been there, done that already. You're like, okay, yeah. we, we've already so, done that so 500 lifetimes yeah, so, ago. <laughs> and it's been interesting because when we first met, it was a couple of years or, yeah, about a couple of years before 9-11. He had a beautiful restaurant in Hollywood Beach, Florida. Really quaint, but very high-end um, Italian food and, you know, went through the hurdle of not having, you know, depended a lot on the tourism at the time and to see that shift, not just in for himself, but actually in our nation, right? What, what it did, econo- the economy, right? Tumble down and everything. And I can see myself, this is the time that he was not very open for help or mm-hmm. asking for help. Mm-hmm. But I said, you know what? Come come and stay with me. You know, it was far from from the beach, but somehow we were able to to help each other without even asking for help, which was very good. And at the same time, um, I had also lost my job at a web tech company from that you know bubble, that big web tech bubble that busted. And at that time. Me and my, one of my great friends, an artist friend, T, we're like, you know what? Let's just start our own design um, studio. 
Wow, <laughs> just that's bold. That. I and, love and that. So, but it was a sense of urgency. And it's something that my dad always said, and I will never forget it. You, the, the person who succeeds is the one that's creative. That's always looking for ways to make something, right? Like, People say you make lemonade out of lemons. If you you know what I mean, like you find ways. But I think not only the creativity, you also have to have that connection um, and the ability to trust your inner compass and guidance. You have to listen to that inner nudge and that push and that sense of urgency and go, oh, I need to go this direction. I something's pulling me in this direction, and then you go in that direction because a lot of people have that. And then they do the opposite for some reason, <laughs> like their well, mind gets in the way or something yeah. and they don't honor that. that for me, I know. That, nudge, yes. You know? For me, it was instant. It was like, we're going to do this. Wow. And it was this wonderful feeling that I had all over my body, like my, you know, nervous feeling and and my stomach was tight, but like, I felt but so. But like excitement, like excited. you're like alive, like this is it. Yeah, came up with with our logo in in a few hours. We illustrated, we put it together, and wow! I had already a huge client because a printer in Miami loved the way that I work. All the stationery that I used to design for this company, you know, startup businesses. When I used to work for this company, all the beautiful packaging and the stationery and all that. It's like Patsy, you know, I have a client that's looking to do this a new website for a translating company. So you get to design um, in various languages. And I'm like, that sounds like really cool. And it was a corporate client. It was, you know, outside of everything else, it was a corporate client. And it was a really wonderful experience because I got to tap in on how they, how they talk, how they listen, what they look for. So that was really easy for me to implement and from there on, we just started connecting. My husband is involved in the food industry, so I, I had a lead with you know the restaurants and food service companies, purveyors, and of course artists and gallery owners. Sure. So there was a, a vast array of different. And Miami was probably a great community for you to to be a designer. Mm-hmm. There's it a was. lot happening there. It's a vibrant city. Patsy's husband is a chef, if you haven't figured that out. Plant-based chef now. But yeah. Yes, yes, he's a plant-based chef now, but um, he's an incredible guy. I'm glad, I'm glad that you found each other Yeah. and helped each other on your journey. And this is where I am now. We met here in Houston one day, and it's mm-hmm. been such a... This is where I came to heal. This is where things just opened up for me after going to New York to get my certification in feng shui back in 2015. Mm -hmm. I came back feeling so energized, feeling so motivated to like, wow, I can actually really look for clients now. Before it was kind of hidden because I was not certified, even though I've been practicing for so long, Mm -hmm. but people want one credential. Exactly. And I was so happy to do that created my website and put all these wonderful things together and in the back of my mind and after talking to my mentors it's like okay Patsy you know this is nice you know so happy for you but let's take a look you know something that we never really talk about and I'm like what's that it's like well let's take a take a look at you know your hepatitis C and I'm like oh Andy we it's been so long. Honestly, I can live with this. I'm fine. Don't worry. I have made so many adjustments to live with this <clears throat> virus for so long that I feel good. I mean, I even had a baby, you know, well, you know, amazing all this, all this miracle stuff. baby. And it's, yeah, I'm fine. It's just like, hmm, okay, next time. So what <laughs> do you think about this? What is it that you don't want to take a look at that? And honestly, I, it's not that I was scared to go through the medical treatment. Yes, it did scar me. The first Mm -hmm. treatments that I did from, you know, 1996. Yeah. um, It was a very ugly experience and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go through that. But I did my research to her pushing me. I did my research about this new 
um, medicine that came about, which my gastroenterologist had recommended before I left Miami, it was still under a study and said I would have been a perfect candidate for it, but I'm really scared when it comes to things like that. Sure. I would need to have some kind of proof or history. Right. And let me tell you, out of all the side effects that people complain about from taking this drug, the one that I have is super rare. So it's, it's not affecting anything um, that I, you can see or sense, but it's somehow it's related to the blood. And so mm. every once in a while, I'm getting some bruises on one leg, my right leg, and they're very painful. Interesting. Very, very painful. And it's little, little reminders, right, of life that, to me, I used to get upset because I'm a little vain. I like wearing shorts in the summer. I like to wear a bathing suit. And yeah. this time... It doesn't, my legs don't look that nice. They look really bruised up. They don't look good, you know, it's, and of course that will cause attention. So I'm very mindful about that. At the same time, I'm learning to, to recognize this as a sign as, okay, where, what is this teaching me right now? What is this, where am I going with this? What is it that I still need to process through this? You know, cause you imagine, 26 years of living with hepatitis C and eradicated in only three months is just Amazing. mind boggling. Amazing. It's mind boggling. So what is the, my body have to go through? Yes, I can regenerate cells. I'm feeding my body right. I'm eating mm -hmm. super clean. Mm -hmm. But so there's this little stems, this little things that are still lingering there. And for me, <clears throat> I've been thinking, what is it that what is the lesson in this what is it that i still need to process in order for me to achieve wholesome healing through it so i need to be patient with this process i think patience also it's so important you're so good at this but it's so important and i'm saying this for the people who are listening to get curious and ask those questions because yeah. it always comes back to us yeah what is it about this that I need to learn, right? Yeah. There's always the lesson and it's always about us. Whatever the situation is, whether it's physical, emotional, something being triggered, there's a physical manifestation of an injury or pain or recurring pattern. It always, 100% of the time, comes back to something within us. Yeah. Yeah? Well, for example... I, I use my case as a good example. Where am I seeing these bruises, for example? On my right leg, which is aligned to the liver, right? It's on the right. Liver is anger issues. Liver mm -hmm. is father issues. Mm -hmm. Liver is, um, you know, confidence at sometimes, even for me, um, cleanliness. You know, it's the, it's the, the liver basically detoxes the body. So there's a lot of stuff there that I need to do. Yeah. I'm looking at this with more compassionate uh, insight, I would say, for myself. Mm -hmm. Because it, it may trigger certain parts of me that, you know, um, being so busy always don't really have the time to observe and go within and be in quietude and solitude. That's such an important thing that's creating the space for that, right? Yeah. Because that's and where we that's, really get the answers is in that, in that quiet space. And for me, I think it's important for everyone to allow some of that time because mm -hmm. may, perhaps the answers may not come, but at least you have a state of grace and you yeah. can breathe and just process it through, you know, have a peaceful breath. It's sometimes really hard to attain. You know? It's hard to attain, especially for people who aren't used to being yeah. in that space of maybe emotional discomfort with yeah. themselves. That's yeah. not something that, that we learn. No. You know, I think most people are raised in an environment that doesn't necessarily nurture that type of presence yeah. and honor 
the emotion that children are experiencing. Everybody wants to shush you, quiet you down, make it go away, stop, you know, behave, yeah. go get in the box, follow the protocols and the norms that are expected of you. Yeah. Right. So we don't really have those tools. You and I, of course, have been on this journey of self-discovery. And through that, you learn how to be in that discomfort and learn to look in to ourselves and really be clear about what that is, the lesson presenting for us. But I feel the biggest gift is really self-love and kindness through the process, right? Yeah. And also sharing, you know, that's something that I, Mm -hmm. I've learned to make amends and be comfortable with sharing. Like I said, you know, there was the sense of not being able to ask for help. Perhaps I've shifted this and I talk about it. Mm -hmm. I share with my family what I have been going through because in some ways, perhaps all I was looking for is a hug, Mm -hmm. that's it. And I had a huge, wonderful revelation, not too long ago actually, Mm -hmm. with my father. I, I had, I found a way to reach to him and I found a way to just communicate from the heart to tell him how I've been feeling all this time wow. since I was a kid. Wow. How, you know, he's one of my greatest teachers. He's always been there for me. I always wanted to feel accepted by him. I always felt like I let him down because I'm such an overachiever and having to ask for, for him to see me. You know, he had this huge expectations of me. So, so powerful that you were able to express that. And I just said, you know, I love you. And thank you for being my dad. Thank you for bringing me to life. Just want you to know that I'm away and I'm going through, you know, these things with, with the side effects. Yeah. And I wanted to share that with him. And How did he receive that after all this year? He left me a voice message early in the morning the next day after I sent him that email. And it was just so beautiful. Like we connected like father and daughter. Like I felt myself as a little kid and he being a strong, loving supportive father figure wow patsy that's so beautiful and so he's beautiful a lot too you know yeah. he's gonna be yeah. he's 70 now mm. but just that connection it was i feel like finally i released so much drama so much pain that i was carrying he didn't even know you know what I mean? <laughs> right <laughs> he didn't yeah. even know this yeah. it was me and right. And the fact that the courage that I had to like write down this letter and actually send them the email, that took a lot. But when I did it, it just felt so good. And I want to be able to communicate this to others who may be listening that sometimes it's just that little step that most most of the time it's us that get in the way for for true expansion. I think also there's such a power in vulnerability. Yeah. There's such a power when you can mm-hmm. can be completely open and heart based, mm-hmm. and know that whatever you're saying is from the heart, and be okay with whatever response you're going to get because that's that's right. take, you take a risk, right? Yeah. When you when you literally open your heart and put everything out there, that person could. Turn, turn away, turn away and reject you. But there's something really powerful and beautiful about being able to get to that space of vulnerability. So, yeah. wow, I just really honor you for being able to have the courage and the, the heart yeah. to do that. I, and I felt that that was a huge step for me to heal this side effect um, mm-hmm. because it's all triggered to emotions. Yeah. And... Little by little, I've noticed that these bruises are subsiding. 
you know this so you're doing all that inner work you know you're moving mm -hmm. that energy you're yeah following your inner guidance yeah. intuition and I mean, I think, you know, I, I'm grateful for you to bring me here and talk about this because Thank it's, you. you know, as I continue to share this experience, you know, for me, the trigger, not many people talk about it, but hepatitis C is huge. Mm -hmm. It's, um, and sometimes it's rising, you know, and it's a bloodborne virus and, you know, could be, I, I got it from a blood transfusion after giving birth to my firstborn. Mm -hmm. I was 19 years old. And yeah, it was traumatizing to know that one, I was contaminated. <laughs> Two, nobody would love me. I was dirty, mm -hmm. I was sick. And somehow I always wanted to have another baby. <laughs> and, and it was, it was huge, this whole thing of like, I never blamed the system. I never blamed the medical system. I never blamed the persons whose blood was you know, in my body now. It right. was just more like, oh, I deserve this. I must be bad. Um, mm. I've been a bad girl. Um, that's, the, that's the hard part, right? Yeah. It's whenever something happens, I think there's always that mental story that we create, right? To attach to. Mm-hmm to make sense of what's happening within us yeah. physically, emotionally, mentally, in our environment, whatever mm -hmm. it is, we attach to these stories and they have such power over us. And most of the time they're not true. Yes. They're these really negative shaming stories that yeah. we attach to. Oh, this is why, you know, I'm a disappointment to my mother or my father or this, you know, or this is why this happened because I, I sinned and, and this is what happens, you know, when you're a sinner. Yeah. I mean, there's all of this stuff, right? And I just think it's so hard because we can go through our entire lives carrying this with us, these burdens and these stories and these um, feelings yeah. that are so heavy and so heartbreaking and so full of shame about who we are when the truth is we are light beings and this is really our core essence yeah is I magic it, you know I, yeah it's so I, hard i've learned to take all of these hurdles and you know a lot of people are sick showing different signs of so many different kind of illnesses and diseases and you know when they hit core when they hit your family when they hit your truest you know one of your closest friends you know, how do we navigate mm -hmm. with that? How do we go through yeah. that process and support and, and just, you know, find the wisdom through, through what we are manifesting because we're contracting this yes. manifestation. Yes. We're learning something about ourselves by going through whatever is presenting in our lives. And yeah. I do believe there's their soul contracts that we have, come into this world, into this life with these very specific things we want to learn yeah. through experience. Yes. And so we have these experiences in our human life just as they were planned out before we came in to, to trigger and teach us, right, and help our yeah. soul evolution. And then people are like outraged and surprised by it. Like, what? I can't yeah. believe that happened. <laughs> No, it really was all part of our soul plan to make yeah. us grow, to make us, you know, heal in our wounds, ancestral wounds. Um, there's so much to it, yeah. right, Patsy? A lot. And I feel that these are the times when somebody's going through a um, life transition, you know, drastic life transition, mm -hmm. to really take the time and, and pause and mm -hmm. connect. At, at a soul level, however they can, even if the person can't move, just find that peace of mind within mm -hmm. to really reflect on what's happening and just breathe it out. Just, just somehow find, if there's a way to find a sense of true self-compassion. Mm -hmm. And that, that to me is really 
very wonderful to go through because it really helps process the healing transition faster, I think. It really it does. It to, does. You know, bring some kind of yeah. balance into whatever else is happening because right. you know the, the heart is so connected to the brain and it's mm -hmm. it's just that you know we we have to maintain our heart at peace and our mind at peace in order to process it through clearly i think the difficult thing is people don't know how to do that yeah. they know that they're feeling off or something isn't right you know it's scary but they don't really know how to come back to center and get to that space and then sit in it. Yeah. There's a discomfort that we have to learn to, to experience and really sit with mm -hmm. to process it and then clear it. Well, let me tell you, when it's hard. You me, I was going through some stuff. I mean, I, yeah. <clears throat> it, took me about a year and a half to really get through the side effects of her voting of the treatment, but it was so hard. The more the emotional aspect, the spiritual aspect, mm -hmm. it really got me to a point, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have had the freedom, the space that I created in order to go yeah. through the entire emotions of this. Not many mm -hmm. people, have that but I was able to to do it it was lengthy and honestly if there's anything I can offer right now is is to bring a sense of you know that quietude like allow a, a place in within your space it could even be the bathroom mm -hmm. just being able to just allow yourself to be in a quiet space to really breathe that in and connect with your heart and your soul and say, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I am here. I am here. I am love. I am light. Mm -hmm. I forgive myself. I yeah. love myself. Yes. And just continue doing that. Even if the person doesn't believe it, you know, like I, there was a one time, it's like, how can I ask for forgiveness for something so horrible that I've done? It's like, you don't ask the person for forgiveness. You're asking yourself for forgiveness. Yes. yes. And I was young at the time when I learned that. That's a huge revelation, right? Yeah. When you understand that this forgiveness thing isn't about the other person. <laughs> it's actually about you, 100%. And there's I, yeah. the, the other thing that I learned too, Wendy, is that there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. This just is, as is, as it's supposed to be presented. Mm -hmm. I've learned to understand that I am the master of my life. Mm -hmm. I am responsible for my happiness. I'm responsible for the breath that I'm taking and nobody's going to take that from me. Mm -hmm. 100%. So all these stamps, you know, all these energy stamps, mm -hmm. I call them. It's like, what am I going to do with that? You know, if, you know, day to day, how am I going to be there for myself, for my husband, for my young child? for my family and, and you know the circles keep expanding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so course. honestly it all comes back to one it all comes you. back to self mm -hmm. how how am i showing up for myself how that's where it all begins and i think a, a lot of women in particular who are wearing so many hats and pulled in so many directions don't understand the importance of self-care and honoring what they need first and foremost, because they're the foundation. Yeah. They're the glue, they're the foundation, they're the pillar and um, matriarchs of their families. Without a solid foundation, without really being intentional about bringing yourself back in, like you're talking about, Patsy, filling your bank, honoring your truth, asking for what you need, asking for help, and really creating a solid, solid base, that from that space, we can so powerfully impact mm -hmm. our families and the world, right? The ripple effect is so much stronger. If we're not honoring ourselves, and I can say this because I spent a lot of time not honoring myself and doing, doing, doing for everyone, 
saying yes for everyone and valuing everyone more than I valued myself, I eventually was forced to stop because there was nothing left. Mm. I had just depleted myself so much. So Your that was a hard my energy bank was empty, empty, empty. And that was a very pivotal moment because that's when I started to go on this journey of self-discovery and self-healing. Even though it wasn't a physical um, healing, it was a soul healing. Yeah. It was very powerful. It's beautiful. So I hope other women and men hear this message. It all starts with us, right? Within. Yeah. So thank you for sharing it. that. Yes, yeah. I'm so honored that you were able to share your story and I honor your journey because it's been a long, long journey for you, right? Well, so Wendy, I, am, I was thinking about today and my connection with you and it's that. It's like, what, what is the purpose of this? And one is that I need to show I am here and that things are possible. You know, there is, I am an optimist realist. I like I, that. Optimist I, realist. I always see the bright side of things. Mm -hmm. there, well, there's plenty of pessimism. I like to, and, and it's an honest optimism. I'm not being a crazy person that's seeing rainbows everywhere and things are just going to be right, right in front right. of me. No, I always have this sense of hope that carries me. I believe that this sense of hope in life that exists within me is what helped me carry on in life when things were not um, at its best, when things were tumultuous and, and really sad times, difficult mm -hmm. times. And let me tell you, that has been probably the biggest thing ever for me to to really come to that sense of grace and gratitude mm -hmm. for my essence my breath is such a connection with that you know it's like it's like yoga mm -hmm. you breathe in creation exhale manifestation and, and the action and it's it's just magnificent how it, it just everything comes together mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. is it's really powerful and i am so glad we met yeah we've and been now, friends and now we're leading and this is the this is the lesson of all mm -hmm. how do we lead with this i'm not you know we all have unique experiences in life we all have different paths we've taken but they all lead to the same place where we want to go Seeking quietude, happiness, balance, harmony, harmony, all these beautiful things that when we come together, you know, it just really amplifies that. It so really does. That, you know, why not invite that harmony within, project it onto your world, and just, just, just do it. You know, also, just take that one step. I think for people who feel like they're off center or know that they are not in that space that that we're we're in or talking about you know there's so many tools available to help you to come back to center there's so many tools there's so many of us light workers out here to help you offering everything from meditation yoga energy work um yeah. you know patsy yeah. feng shui um harmonizing energies you know we're both marconics practitioners we're energy workers we're sisters we're light sisters the two of us and i'm so yeah. grateful that you've come into my life and i am too it's so much better to live here in houston with you <laughs> i know we have each other fans <laughs> you know what's going on and in, in yes this, you know universal i think i think we speak each other's language so I'm very grateful this, for, this, for you. And this is very important too, you know, find that support system, find something that works for you. You know, I think for anybody that's there seeking mm -hmm. healing, seeking a resolution in their lives, 
you know, the first step is, is to ask for it. Write it down in your journal. Mm -hmm. Ask. Put it out in the universe. Yes. And then right? energetically, don't worry about how it's going to show up. And be open it, to the opportunity. Put it out there, you know. And I think it's important for people to ask for things that aren't material. You can ask for inner peace. Yes. You can ask for harmony. You can ask for um, love. Yes. You can ask for healing. You can ask for things that aren't necessarily tangible. I think people feel like, oh, I have to ask for the new car or the million dollars or the the handbag, you know, people are very um, material in their requests, but you can also ask, yeah. yeah, you can also ask for, you know, the right mentor to come into your life or the right teacher or the right idea or yeah. ask, ask for what you need to show yeah. up. You might yeah. be surprised at what shows up, you know? And when it does, say thank you more, please. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Me? One of the simplest things that, you know, if something's going a little hectic, if the day's gotten, you know, too much to do, mm -hmm. ground myself and say, perfect peace and poise are mine today. Ooh, perfect like peace that. and poise are mine today. This is from That's Paramahansa funny. Yogananda. And it's just so, like, I repeat it, I repeat it, and things are just beginning to feel fluid again mm. like things are just working out you again. start to reset that energy yes smooth it out a little yes. bit it yeah it could be in any situation it could be in the car you know you can be stuck with a lot of traffic or you're rushing in a supermarket or you know too many client calls back to back <laughs> yeah yeah it can get yeah. hectic perfect, perfect peace, peace and poise are mine oh. today I love that. That's, I think that's a perfect note to end our conversation on, Patsy. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for your time, your wisdom, and your beautiful energy today. I love you so much. It was such an honor having you as a guest. It is wonderful. Thank you so much for allowing. Yeah, it was great having you today. And to my audience, thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all. Don't forget to be kind to yourselves. Yeah. We'll see you next time.